what's going on everybody it's your urban farmer and frank he finally arrived in the mail he beat the cold temperatures during the travel and he is with us and he is cold worms don't really like being cold they've got a lot of water in their bodies and they can of course freeze uh, you can see there's not too much movement in there but they are alive and they are very cold to the touch so we need to quickly assemble a temporary worm bin where they're going to live recover and then I will make the transition into our no-till bed I've got some lukewarm water probably room temperature around 68 69 degrees and we're just going to invigorate this medium with some heat it's great compost these are Alabama jumpers these are great worms very very resilient very tough able to really power through clay soils I have some old cover crop from a chop a couple of uh, defoliations ago in the no-till bed just some legumes and some cannabis plant in there going to mash it up it turns into a powder real nice and easy we're going to add this into our mix it's going to be very similar to the soil mix that we use in our no-till bed that way once we transition the worms they won't feel uh, any transplant shock so to say the medium will be very familiar it's gonna have some malted barley uh, the brown stuff with some peat moss. Worms really enjoy peat moss and it's great at holding moisture. Uh, this is going to be insect frass. What I'm doing is just kind of adding all kinds of ingredients from wheat flour to kelp you'll see later on and just trying to make a balanced uh, fungal to bacterial mix which is going to produce the best quality earthworm castings which is going to help maximize any crop that you put in it. So we have some more alfalfa meal, we have a craft blend nutrient from build a soil that's got pretty much everything in it. We're going to add in some compost, this is going to be our inoculation, our source of microbes that are going to break down all this organic matter, make it plant available and Frank is going to come through there and munch on those bacteria that are breaking it down, mix it up with all the enzymes in his gut, turn it into earthworm castings which is chock full of beneficial microbial life. Here we're adding crustacean meal. This is going to be a great source of calcium. It's going to break down slowly over time. And it's also going to add a little bit of grit to the soil that's going to help Frank with his digestive system. I'm going to go ahead and add in some kelp. Remember we want to do about equal parts green to the brown. Some of these ingredients are more potent than others as far as the carbon to nitrogen ratio. You'll learn these things over time. And if you like, I have my complete soil recipe in the description of this video. After adding in some rock dust, I decided to switch to a bigger mixing bin where the mixing process gonna, is going to be a little bit easier. And make sure you always wear a mask when you work with this stuff. You don't want to be inhaling any of the dust into your lungs. You want to keep that stuff in the soil. So just a nice little mix. We're going to add in more compost. This is going to be a fish compost. We also added in some earthworm castings from our previous Frank Tank. These are regular oats that you can buy at any grocery store. That's going to be a great source of food for all the fungal community members in our mix. Again, we're just going to add in some room temperature water and get this mixed up. When you grab a handful of this stuff and squeeze it, you want to see about one or two drops coming out. That's about the moisture level that you want to have inside your worm bin. So also going to mix up some straw barley hay and we're going to be ready to add in the worms so just a little bit more mixing getting our hands dirty this is the favorite part anyways you can see i'm kind of making a pyramid structure it's uh, high in the middle and shallow on the sides this is because i'm anticipating the mix is going to heat up and i want frank to be able to go off to the sides where it's cooler while the microbial activity calms down and the heat calms down and frank will crawl right back in there and start breaking all that stuff down so you can see I'm just putting him right there on the top. That way if he wants to go to the bottom where there's going to be a heat source, he can go through the entire medium. So a little bit of an efficiency trick with the worms there. They are so cold, I am just heating them up with the warmth from my hands. They are still alive, but I don't think they were going to be if they got any colder or stayed that way any much longer. So I buried them. Uh, here is the heat mat that we laid down. Again, if they want to seek out that heat before the microbes start taking action, which is only going to be a few hours at most, uh, they're going to have to go through the whole entire medium to get to the bottom and seek out that heat. And again, the sides are shallow. If it does get too hot, they'll be able to escape. In case they want to escape too much, I've just added some duct tape in a square around the tank and put some salt that will stick to the tape, and that will be an anti-frank fence 
in case he decides he wants to take a walk, <laughs> which is not going to happen now that we have a, a nice security system. So I just put some panda film over to keep the light out. You always want to keep the light away from your worms. That's not something they're interested in. And they'll be good. We'll check on them uh, in about 24 hours. But here we are off to our no-till bed in our homemade box about 3 by 4 feet and, it's, and 6 and a half feet tall. We have one blueberry muffin surrounded by an array of leguminous cover crop including uh, beans, peas, there's clover in there, there's some wheatgrass, all kinds of stuff. Fixing nitrogen to the soil, helping out the fungal community establish themselves, moving around nutrients, pest and pathogen resistance. All driven by the beautiful HLG 550. Check out theurbanfarmer.com and pick up one for yourself. If you have any questions, also feel free to contact me at theurbanfarmer.com if you have a question or a comment or you just want to say hello. So, moving right along, this is our first week of flower, about seven days completed. We are running about a 10 and a half hours on, 13 and a half hours off flower cycle. When we were vegging, it was 16 hours on and 8 hours off. I don't think I mentioned that very much in the vegetative series, but now you know. And it's time to increase the wattage on the light. HLG makes it easy. They have just a little bit of a, a rubber kind of dealio that's in a hole in the driver. And inside that hole is a very tiny screw, so just grab your smallest screwdriver and you can rotate that screw clockwise or counterclockwise depending if you want to dim the light or increase the wattage so we're going to bring it up to about 350 watts where it was at about 275 watts for the duration of the vegetative period this light goes up to about 485 watts 2.6 micromoles per joule super efficient I've never had a better light I'm super excited about uh, how the plant is reacting to it I think we're gonna have some really pretty flowers you can see I've got the yo-yos there, that's just some low stress training, pulling the branches down, spreading everything out, making sure light can penetrate in there, and uh, helping to maximize our yield. Uh, though I'm not really having any uh, yield contests with this one, I'm more just interested in the quality. But uh, anyways, moving right along, we gotta give our cover crop a chop, and we're going to help increase airflow. and I think it just looks a little bit nicer when it's tightened up like that. We'll go ahead and keep the lima bean plant. I think it adds a nice little ambiance to the flavor. Anyways, you can really see the yo-yos, and I've just got a few of them around the perimeter of the pot. Again, just pulling the branches down, letting the light penetrate a little bit deeper into the plant, and you get a more level canopy. It's a lot easier to control. I haven't done any super cropping. I have done a little bit of topping, but now it's time to give the garden a little bit of a vacuum. Remember, a clean grow room is most often a successful grow room. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the new subscribers for joining me. The channel has been experiencing some rapid growth and I just want to make sure to extend an extra welcome to everybody that's joined. I hope you get something out of the channel. Of course, thank you to all my old subscribers that have stuck with me all the years. That about wraps it up for this episode. I'm just going to lower the light to about 15 inches, turn my fan back on, and bid everybody a farewell. I hope you have a great upcoming week. This is the Urban Farmer saying, please don't drink and drive, smoke and fly, happy farming everybody.